Okay, got a question here from uh, NOF Customs. All right. Um, I think he's might be a bit of a builder himself. Oh yeah, I'm a guitar builder. His right. question is, yeah. I'm so interested with the factory story. Yeah. yeah. Can you ask him what he could would have done better at the time when he was running it? I'm a guitar builder as well and make a living as one, yeah. but I think I could learn a boatload from his factory stories. Yeah. Well, the, no, the factory was really good. I mean, we did really well. Everybody had a particular job to do, so I taught each person how to do the jobs. Uh, like some lads, I only built the, I built all the necks in the factory. You, you're a neck man. I just made the necks and and supervised the rest. Yeah, because the bodies were quite, they were simple designs really. The yeah. gaff and all them, they were quite. I made the gaffs as well. Yeah. Because there was more complex build on them. Yeah. yeah. But the sim simple bodied guitars they were made with uh, Brazilian mahogany brilliant woods yeah, yeah. necks were maple yeah all handmade I did get a, a special cutter for guitar neck shape so we could put them up the router and I made a jig for all the necks in put them up the router and cut the, the neck shape yeah they, they made the neck profile on the cutter for my specifications on the neck yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I did it once like that and that was the only time I ever did it. You didn't like it? No. Why not? Well, it felt so dangerous. This uh, great big cutter fucking spinning around. I would have been better off with a, a round cutter and just doing it separate. Uh, I, I, can't really, I can't really picture what you're talking about, really. Well, I'll see if I can see it. I've got the cutter somewhere. Because I thought these routers, you know, like the, the routing blades, they're yeah. kind of like, they made some really funny shapes, but they yes. do like amazing things when they're cutting, don't That's they? That's right, yeah. Like, almost cut out like square holes, so you think, right, yeah. how is that physically possible? Yeah, man. Let's have a look, I've got the cutter somewhere. I don't know where I've put it anymore. It don't matter if you can't find it. No, I don't think I can. It was probably in there. I put it on one side safe. It's basically, it's basically like that, except it's much bigger. Oh yeah. It's a great big thing. It's about big that whopper. wide and that shape. And uh, so, what it, kind of like routing machine was it? This. Well, that of? one there, that one there. But I use a big Wodkin as well in the factory, so I can't see the cutter. So we're talking about like losing an arm if you're not careful, aren't you? Well, yeah, or your face if yeah. it comes shooting out. Yeah. You know, it felt so so bloody dangerous. <laughs> I didn't fancy doing it because I had a few accidents with the big belt sander I bought when that started exploding. Yeah. So like, it makes you wary of machines. I guess, like you said, if, if you're fearful of machines, you got to stop using them, aren't you? No, I'm not fearful of them. No, I, I said if one is but, fearful. Yeah, I did have a moment uh, a couple of years ago with my overhead router that uh, I couldn't hold it down properly. All right. And I couldn't work out why. And uh, I still can't remember what happened. Because it's fine. I'll never have a trouble with it. What do you mean you couldn't hold it down properly? You mean? I just couldn't hold the work. There you go. There it is. All right. There's the neck cutter. And I used that. Yes. For what? And I made one neck. I did one neck with it. It's amazing to see how that works, actually. You, you ought to one day just... It's, it sounds like a bloody helicopter taking yeah. off when you... Yeah, it really does, so... We ought, uh, ought, ought to get a bit of blank wood and just uh, yeah. have a go. So I didn't, I didn't fancy doing it again. I thought I'd rather... I was making... I was making ten a, a day. Well, I, I do Mondays. I, put, made, I started making ten necks every Monday. And I'd have, I'd have them finished by the end of the week, all of them, shaped and fretted and dotted and everything else. I thought you would have done so more than that. I might no, have just you ten, I was only doing ten. Yeah. Uh, um, okay, okay, so... Um, but I've got stuff everywhere that I've used in the past and made. Uh, I've got all the jigs up there, most of them burnt up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On a, a synth base I, was, I made the prototypes for. Yeah, for Richard, Richard Branson's uh, thing. Yeah, it? Branson, yeah. Well, so what do you think? So advice, if somebody sets up a factory or there's, they've one person or they want to employ another couple, like this guy on YouTube. Right. What do you think, what would you have done different in your Not day? Not done it. Not done it? Yeah. If I could give anybody any advice in Britain, yeah. is the best way of losing all your money is 
opening a factory because you're spending all you've got to pay rates, rent on a big building. Yeah. And guitar building isn't doesn't make enough money for all that. Well I suppose if you lived in, in a country where say in, maybe in America. America, yeah. You could probably fine. sell lots of guitars and you do millionaire for you. So know. it's yeah, it's well worth doing in America. So do you think then that um guitar making in the UK is probably a bit more of a niche a niche, a niche, I think it's uh, a niche market. market, and you've got to just establish yourself as a one guy in a in a workshop creating nice, nice things. Yeah, because I think there are lots of people like that in the UK, aren't there? Yeah, making instruments. Just build, build, just, just move into a bigger shed if you want to. But um, just remember that you've got to heat it up. You've got to buy proper big tools for a lot so that, of the yeah. jobs. So all those issues there, the negative ones are like cost and admin. I'm not being negative about it, but it does cost so much money that you're chasing the, the customers all the while for your yeah. money to pay because the bank are, are at you. Yeah, I'm going to say, I wasn't implying any negativity. I said like negative as no, in... No, not negative, as in but the, I just uh, wouldn't do it now. I was advised by a good friend of mine who's got a big factory and he still has. He's still got a big factory and... They've done very well, the family have out of it, but they were making kitchens. Yeah, and tables and things. Yeah. And tables yeah, yeah. and uh, wardrobes for well paying customers. And they're easy to make, probably. Mm, much easier to make. Well, once you you've set up square things are easy to make. Yeah, because you used to make a lot of like, pub tables, didn't you? I had to, yeah, because I was, I was obliged to a friend of mine who kept wanting me to do them for them. Yeah, but so I made a load of pub tables. I didn't want to do them, but we did do them while we were setting up the factory. Yeah, plus it's probably quite easy money, really, in reality. Well, but you'd only want to make, it's not really worth doing. Don't really want to make tables, do you? I didn't uh, want to do that. Yeah. So, any other advice, uh, factory-wise? Um, factory-wise, you know, like say with your experience. If you must do it, don't do it big. Okay, because like if I if I if I, gone, if I could go back in time and get the younger uh, 36, 35 year old Doug, you would have said. I'm doing it. I know. I'm doing it, and you That's can't true. stop me. So. Yeah. Well, no, I was determined to do it. Yeah, because you wanted to. Yeah. And so you can't. You can never stop anybody no, from. No, no. With trying ambition, to no. Live no. their dream. I don't want to. But, but. But don't go into it with your eyes shut. Go into it with your eyes wide open. Do it. Don't go into a big factory. Have a big factory because it, it, the cost is just astronomical. I Even though you think, oh, it's only 100 quid a week. Rent, rent, rent. Rent, yeah. I can't remember the size of your factory, but was it pretty big? Uh, the first one I had was 5,000 square foot, and the last one I had was 10,000 square foot, yeah. which is big. Pretty big, yeah. So, chances are, if you're thinking about starting, starting small... 2,500 square foot. Just get a bigger workshop yourself, and maybe yeah. you can probably get like uh, somebody on uh, like a YTS or some kind of government induced, yeah. induced if training. there is such a thing anymore well, isn't there such a thing is there probably not in England uh. yeah so you probably went at it like a pig at a tater a bit too much but we did very well as well the first uh, trade show we had massive orders I'm going to say you know if like no we did very well it probably could have it's probably a case of it like if you'd uh, if, if things had been slightly differently you could be you could have a couple of Ferraris outside right now, can you? Well, yeah. I mean, I was hoping that the uh, answer system would have taken off a bit bigger than it yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. But I couldn't afford the publicity because I spent it all on the bloody... What's the name? Patents. Yeah, because then you probably would have had to get a backer in. He'd want 50%. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then before you know it, um, you're making your your cuts like... Uh, Pound. Well, you know, 10%. He, you know, he's getting 20% profit, you're getting 10. Yeah, it's the same as being married. You come home with your full weight back in and then you go out with a pound. And then, yeah, but then you can't proceed forward without money that you haven't got. That's right, yeah. So... And then the bank wants whatever you're getting coming in off you. Yeah. Um, hmm. Well, I think that's pretty much covered it for, like, uh, the factory side of things. What would you say, though, is the, the most happy thing about the factory? Oh, it was good laugh. Yeah, so it's good. Working with other people. Yeah. Uh, all aiming for the same goal. Nick, Neil, Peg. Yeah. You office ladies. Yeah. Um, Joanne, that was Joanne Dockery. I suppose you probably, yeah, you, obviously, like you said before, you'd she have... She was a lovely girl. Sometimes you'd have... She started out as a yop, what they were yeah, called yeah. in them days. The, uh, youth Opportunity Programme. Yeah, program and with Colin, he was a youth opportunity yeah. lad. Um, you would have had the odd 
semi-famous person coming in or yes record company representative or yeah. something so it was probably quite uh in fact who was the the biggest person you'd had coming to your factory i'd sadly francis come who? he was a he was a session bass player he was working with banana Rama at the time sadly francis okay sadly uh yeah he came up with a, a few a couple of dolly birds well, he was on top of the. You no, know, he was on Des O'Connor show with Brianna Rama playing the bass. Yeah. He had a gaff bass. Oh, a gaff, yeah. But yeah. it was a big bass, and he's only a, a little chap. Yeah. And uh, it swamped him, but he was a good player. Did he want you to make a smaller one? No. No, what? he just came up to the factory from London with the girls, your boys, lovely girls, just to see where he had his bass from and have it. Checked over and stuff. I think it was just a day out. Just a day out. Jolly boys day out. Yeah. yeah. With the two lovely, lovely girls he'd got with him. Okay, so he's he's also left the mark. What about did um, who else? What came actually came to the factory that you can remember? I can't. Can't, can't remember. remember. No, I can't. Okay, what's the? Did you have any kind of like accidents there, or but almost terrible experiences, or almost like? Anything go wrong or anything? No. So apart from when the uh, big belt sander, which was a, it was a, obviously second down. I had the big machines for second down. There was the, the big Wadkin router, which was seven and a half ton, I think. Yeah. Uh, and then I had a big Dankart plane thickness. So that was about the same kind of weight. So yeah. Just massive big cast iron machines. Yeah. And I had a big had belt sander yeah so you could sand the bodies flat like a, like a door almost you could do a door well, you could do yeah. doors on yeah. that's what it was for general thing yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's got its own built an extractor fan okay yeah big thing on the top yeah there. yeah and uh anyway setting all i set up all the electrics everywhere and then a three phase and plugged it in yeah uh, we had a uh, bus bar system for plugging things in with a bus bar mm. It was a, a, it was called a bus bar system, and you you click click them together, yeah. These bars, and they got all sockets in them. It's like spurs, kind of electrical spurs, yeah. sort of. Yeah. But they were great big bars, so they're each about six foot. Oh yeah, okay, okay. Right, yeah. so with a lot of sockets on them, and you could run them down the centre of your factory, and then you could plug yeah. lots of machines in them. Okay. Uh, three phase. So when you plugged it in, switched it on, and it was going lovely. The belt was going round nicely. And I'd got extra belts, bought new belts. Yeah. And it was going round and I was trying it out and all of a sudden the the fan in it, we hadn't connected that up to a power. No, I hadn't no it was going to oh, power. To an external uh, hole. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. But I hadn't connected the hole up to a hose. Yeah. And it started shooting out the blades of the fan. And they uh, were metal. Big yeah. metal blades, cast blades. <laughs> and they all started breaking up inside. Ah, because yeah. it must have been running out of truth. So yeah, 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 breaking yeah. And they're shooting them out. It was like bloody gun going off. <laughs> <laughs> a, and it was right at the far end of my factory. So yeah. we all ran out the way. <laughs> and we had to run down to the mains and get the mains off. Yeah. So it's yeah. like it's like a blunderbuss firing like a load of uh, nails and things. No, it's a bit Laurel and Hardy. Yeah. So anyway, that was done. So that could have been almost lethal. Well, it would have been lethal if we had to run. <laughs> Luckily, I could run in them days. Stuff like that. Then I, put, I installed all my own three phase, everything. Did everything. Did yeah, set you... the factory up, yeah. Made yeah. the, made, built the office. There was one, wasn't one there. Yeah, yeah. And I had, had the, the gas heating installed in the ceiling, great big fan heaters. Yeah. That was lovely. And then built the, uh, built the, uh, extractor system for the spray booth had a big spray booth yeah probably as big as this workshop yeah yeah the spray booth was uh and uh, this massive big extractor system was installed for me bought that uh and then i built all the uh, i built my buffing machine i built seven benches i think yeah, yeah. big benches about this size yeah yeah, yeah 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 built them all in a day in a day yeah are. yeah well, it's just, i was really yeah. busy Got yeah, everything yeah. done really fast. Must have been all those cigarettes you're smoking. Well, it was. You're only about all six, them fish and chips. Were Sixty a day it, years ago, were you? Well, I was now eighty for I finished. Eighty. Jesus Christ, eighty fags a day. That takes some doing now, wouldn't it? 
I used to smoke between fags. Yeah. <laughs> I used to love smoking. Really, after the first cigarette I ever had when I was 16, that was it, I was hooked. It's totally hooked, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a funny thing, isn't it? Well, if only the, uh, if only this tobacco companies knew what damage they'd do to the world. Well, did they? <laughs> you know. I reckon if, if cigarettes, if cigarettes didn't kill you and made you stink, I'd do it myself. You know, something to do, isn't it? You know. It's great uh, yeah. smoking a fag is. It's a lovely thing. I know it's bad for you, and I know all the all the crap. But uh, I, I never was ill with the smoking. I didn't ever even have a smoker's cough. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's okay. What's well, the last little end to the video then? Eh? Yeah, it's done. I mean, it's not perfect, but the guitar is a mess. He's made a mess of it all. So he's, the, the top he's is a coming busker. off the sides. It no, it's a dropped it and broken it all. Uh, broke it. Was it like? Oh, there, it's there. That will come away, all okay, the way around. Yeah. It's plastic the sides are, formica. Yeah. It's one of the formica model. It's a busker, yeah. He's been busking in Japan. It's a Martin. I know. What's it, probably about a grand and a half. No, they're not. Oh, yeah. About a pound. Kind of made that up. Oh, this is that chap since. Uh, okay, I'll tell you what, we'll end that video. That's a bit of a, a workshop video then, yeah? Yeah. There and then, is. if maybe you can think of any more tales between now and whenever about the workshop. I will do. We can probably do... Yeah, uh, we'll keep putting a little tales on. We can probably do one about... Um, try and remember all the people that you make guitars for one day. But uh, Okay then, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll say goodbye. Okay, try.